Hello Inventors! Welcome back to the course. In this video, our focus will be on the brain of our embedded systems, which is the embedded software. This video will be all about exploring the answers to the following questions. What is embedded software and how it is different from other software? What is its role in an embedded system? What are the different technologies used to build embedded software? So let's tackle the first question. What is embedded software? A short definition would be, embedded software is a code that runs on custom-built special purpose hardware, which is designed to perform a single well-defined duty. I hope you have seen the previous video in this course and understand what do I mean by custom build special purpose hardware in this definition. Let us have a look at a few examples of embedded software. Not so long ago, before the domination of smartphones, we had a special class of devices just to play music known as MP3 players. On MP3 player, we could upload songs and listen to them all day long through our headphones. They had a very simple interface with five buttons. One button to play and pause the music, two buttons to go to the next or the previous song, two more buttons to increase or decrease the volume. Compared to the general purpose devices like smartphones, the job of MP3 players were very simple, specific and straightforward, which is to play music. The entire hardware is custom built to serve the specific purpose of playing music. An MP3 player consists of the following parts. A flash memory to store digital MP3 files, a good digital to analog converter to convert this digital data from the memory into an analog audio signal, which is then fed into the 3.5 mm earphone jack. Then the signal is fed to the headphones which plays the music in the memory for us to enjoy. On an MP3 player, the job of the embedded software is to turn on and off the device, play and pause a song, go to the next or the previous song. In a sports watch, embedded software job includes telling time, getting location via GPS, getting the elevation via altimeter, and getting the direction via magnetometer. On a camera, the embedded software controls various modes like auto manual, controls the shutter action, stores the picture into SD cards, and help you transfer or share the pics. Brilliant, right? On a washing machine, the embedded software plays the preset you selected and turn off the washing machine. Let's now discuss how does embedded software differ from a regular software. Software comes in the form of layers. What do I mean by that? Consider a typical computer. The actual hardware made up of motherboard, CPU, and RAM forms the layer zero. On top of that, we have a layer of code that interacts and controls the hardware directly. This layer consists of firmware of your computer's motherboard and the operating system. On top of that, we have the apps. Some call the firmware and drivers of the operating system as embedded software as they deal with the hardware directly. We strongly believe that the term embedded software must only be used to call software that runs on embedded systems. We have a set of articles on our website explaining why is that the case. You can read the articles from the link provided in the video description below. Consider that as reading material to keep you entertained till we release the next video. It's time to look at the technologies used in embedded software development. There are several types of embedded software and that can be broadly classified into the following types. Embedded bare metal software, embedded Linux software, embedded auto software and embedded networking software. Don't worry if all the jargon stated sound crazy. We have made another video which explains each of the type in detail. You can go to the video by clicking on the card above or link in the video description. So go ahead and watch that video and come back to this one. Coming back to the topic of technologies used in embedded software development, these different types of embedded software need a specific set 
of skills to be expert in. Big companies often hire engineers who are expert in one given skill set. However, while the small companies need engineer who can do a little bit of everything, no matter what type of embedded software you wish to develop, some skills are common for all. The following are the seven important technologies you need to learn in order to develop embedded software. C programming language, microcontrollers and peripherals, operating system, computer networking, software engineering, debugging skills, and basics of electronics. Here at embeddedinventor.com, we call these the seven pillars of embedded software. If you are interested in learning embedded software engineering, we have written an article on our website on how to become an embedded software engineer, which you can check out from the link in the video description. Next, let's review the industries that hire embedded software engineers. Embedded software engineers are being employed in several industries like consumer electronics, automobiles, industry automation, medical industry, aviation, and space exploration. Again, we have made an entire video explaining the above industries, which you can go to from the card above or link in the video description. If you're looking for some books to buy to start learning embedded software, you can find our recommended books in the link in the description. All right, so you have a look at the recommended videos and article. Hopefully by the time you're done, we will be ready with the next part of the series for you. In the next part, we will learn about the body of embedded systems, that is the embedded hardware. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Keep inventing, keep exploring. I will see you all in the next video.